in this video, we're using the entry-level Synology DS220J NAS. We're going to use it to create a time machine backup destination for our iMac. And this creates a super simple and budget-friendly backup solution. So here it is, the Synology DS220J NAS. Now, as I stated at the outset, this is a very budget-friendly model. In fact, this is the entry-level Synology NAS for consumers. Now, I covered a lot of Synology products over the years, and they're usually on the high end of the scale. But this one is definitely, without a doubt, entry-level. It comes with two USB-A ports, a gigabit ethernet connection, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So what you're going to find inside are two bays. Now, in most cases, when you purchase this NAS, it's going to come diskless. That is, without any disk inside, you provide your own hard drives. And as you can see, it actually has two bays to accommodate those hard drives. So I have two 16 terabyte Seagate drives inside here. So that fits real nicely in a very compact package. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Then you want to connect the ethernet cable to your router or in some cases, even directly to your Mac, just depending on your setup. Now, I just recently jumped on the Eero bandwagon and I'm going to just connect it directly to one of these guys right here, which actually I'm really digging the Eero. Let me know if you want to see more coverage on that and I'll make a video with my Eero experience. But I have it all connected now, just going to fire up the Synology NAS. It's going to initialize, then you load up Disk Station Manager in a browser, and it holds your hand through the entire process, including creating your volume. So let's talk about establishing a time machine backup. First thing you want to do is open up File Station, and then go to where it says Create New Shared Folder. All right, so now you want to give the shared folder a name, and I recommend just naming it Time Machine. So let's go ahead and do that right here. So it's already populated my location, the volume one. There's only one volume on this machine. So I'll select that and then just simply click next. And now it's going to ask you about encryption. And I recommend skipping this step because we're actually going to encrypt on the Mac side. So just go ahead and click next there and then click apply. All right. So once you click apply, you're going to see processing and then it's going to present the permissions for that shared folder. Just go ahead and click OK. We're not going to touch anything here at all. Okay, so the next step is to create a time machine user. So we're back at our desktop. We want to open up control panel and then you want to click on user. All right, so we're going to click where it says create and then we're going to give the user a name. Now, no spaces are allowed here. So just type in time machine, no spaces, insert a password. And just give me a second while I'll compose that. All right, so once you have those things in there, go ahead and click the next button. Then after that, it's gonna ask you to join groups. Nothing you need to change here, so just click next. All right, so it's gonna ask you to assign shared folder permission. So on the screen, you definitely do need to add read write access to the Time Machine shared folder for the Time Machine user. So click next. And then here for the quota, I'm just going to set it up so that Time Machine won't use all the storage space, but I'm going to limit it to about four times the space of my iMac, which is 256 gigabytes. So I'm going to give it about a thousand gigabytes or one terabyte and then go ahead and click next. And then on the sign application permissions, nothing to change here. So just go ahead and click next and then nothing to change on the user's speed limit setting. Go ahead and click next there as well. So everything looks good. Now it's just a matter of hitting the apply button. All right, so we have our Time Machine shared folder. We have our Time Machine user. Now we need to establish the backup location. So in Control Panel, you want to click where it says File Services. Make sure SMB is enabled. Click Advanced, and then enable Bonjour Time Machine Broadcast via SMB. So just click that little checkbox, and then click where it says Set Time Machine Folders, right there below. And now choose your location. Of course, you want to choose the time machine folder, click apply, and you can click apply again, although it's going to say no settings were changed. And now you can close out of control panel. And in fact, you can actually close out of the browser, close out of DSM because we're done here. Now it's time to head over to our Mac 
and complete the final step of this Time Machine Synology setup. So the first thing you want to do on your Mac is to open up System Preferences and then click where it says Time Machine. Now you want to click where it says Select Backup Disk and then find the name of the shared folder that you have SMB access enabled for. So in this case, Time Machine own the name of your Synology, which in my case is called Fireflower Local. So you want to select that and then click where it says Encrypt Backups and then click Use Disk. All right, so it's going to want to connect to your Synology to that shared folder. So go ahead and put in the username and password that you created in that second step. So we're going to put in Time Machine, put our password in, and then click the Connect button. And now since we selected to encrypt backups, you're going to want to establish a password, a separate password that Time Machine will use to encrypt the backup. So this can be its own unique password to encrypt the disk. Be sure not to forget this password, otherwise you will not be able to restore any data from the backup disk. So once you have the password entered, go ahead and click the encrypt disk button. And now Time Machine is ready to go. You can see where it says next backup and it's counting down. Now you want to click where it says show Time Machine in menu bar because that allows you to actually go ahead and kick off these backups. You can also click options to restrict or exclude items from the backup if you wish to do so. All right, so up to our menu bar, we're going to click the Time Machine icon and then click where it says Backup Now. So that'll force the backup to start and you should also have backup automatically enabled so that daily backups will run, hourly backups will run, etc. So you can see this thing is kicking off, it's preparing the backup and expect this initial backup to take a while because it has to dump everything over to the backup location and a lot's going to depend on your connection speed, the speed of your disk, both on your Mac and on the Synology NAS. Just a lot of different variables involved here. But generally speaking, as you can see there, it says two hours remaining just to back up a little over 100 gigabytes. If you have a much bigger disk, expect it to take a lot longer. But remember, you're connected wirelessly, at least in my case, I'm connected wirelessly. And this is gigabit Ethernet, not 10 gigabit Ethernet, like some of the more expensive NAS machines. But here's the benefit here, folks. I've had these Time Machine backups running for just a few days already. And I already have lots of backups available there to back up my precious data that I don't want to risk losing. And I just really love the overall simplicity and ease of use of the Time Machine interface. You can easily go back in time, so to speak, and find files that you may have deleted or may have changed, etc. So if you appreciate it, how to videos like this with an entry level NAS like the DS220J, let me know down below in the comment section. If, if you want more regular NAS content, how to do things like run a Plex server, how to set up your own private cloud backup solution let me know as well. So thanks again for watching folks. This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac.